Hey guys, welcome back to Duty's Backyard Builds. In this video, I will be going in full details of all the upgrades I've done so far on my 1988 Monte Carlo SS. I purchased the car from the original owner. The car was actually a barn found, which is really rare. The original owner had it stored in a barn since 1992. The car was all original, 100% solid with zero rust throughout the whole car. Guys, I'm really, really picky when it comes to buying classic cars. I really try my best to avoid cars that need cosmetic work. I've done it in the past, didn't work out, so I really try my best to avoid those headaches. So once I brought the car home, I started all by removing the suspension. Once I removed the complete suspension, I started cleaning the chassis. I used a wire brush and the greaser to smooth out the chassis and remove all dirt and grease from it. I then painted the chassis using VHT chassis paint in which you can find at your nearest auto parts store. I waited for it to dry, then I started installing the suspension. So on the front suspension, I went with UMI performance lower and upper control arms and QA1 adjustable coilovers. Guys, I love coilovers. I love putting them on my cars because you can set your height at your preference for a perfect, perfect stance. As for brakes, I went with six piston wheel wood calipers with 12.19 rotor size. The reason why I went with 12.19 rotors is because you can actually still run your factory 15 inch wheels with no clearance issues. I installed all new four standard links, inner and outer tie rods with billet QA1 tie rod sleeves. I believe that completes the whole front suspension. As for the rear, I went with QA1 upper and lower control arms, QA1 adjustable coilovers. For the rear end, I went with a quick performance nine inch with a two track posi unit, 370 gear ratio with 35 spline axles. The brake setup, again 12.19 rotors and four piston wheel wheel brakes. I also installed a UMI anti roll bar and a shock mount tower brace for extra support. Guys, I like to build my cars from the bottom up. Every car builder is different. This is just how I like to build my cars. So once the suspension was complete, I went ahead and started removing the factory engine. I also removed the wheel wells and scrubbed the engine bay using a wire brush and degreaser. I then painted the engine bay using BHT chassis paint. As for the wheel wells and AC box, I used VHT epoxy paint, which works great when painting plastic, doesn't peel, leaves it with a nice clean finish. Again, you can find it at your nearest auto parts store. So once everything was cleaned up nice, I went ahead and started looking for an engine. I'm a LS guy. I have nothing against any other engine. I just like LSs. So I purchased an LS3 from a C6 Corvette with low mileage. For those that don't know and are in the process of doing an LS swap, guys, they're making it so easy now. They actually sell LS swaps kits for a complete swap. My preference is Holly. I like using Holly, so I went ahead and purchased their motor mounts, oil pan, and cross member for a full L80E transmission. As for the engine upgrades, I contacted Texas Speed and Performance and got their Stage 2 turbo cam, new valve springs, retainers, seals for the heads, a melting high volume oil pump, racing timing chain, lifters, push rods, LS9 head gaskets, ARP bolts all around, a fast LSXR102 intake manifold with fast fuel rails. I also contacted Harley and purchased their new LS mid mount pulley system in a black finish. I contacted Jags and purchased their custom LSX valve covers with coil pack relocation bracket. In my opinion, it makes the engine look a lot cleaner when the coil pack sit on top of the valve covers. Just give it a nice clean look. As for the wiring, I chose PSI standalone wire harness with their ECU and trans module for the 480E transmission. Cooler system, I went with the Griffin LS swap radiator with shrouds and dual electric fans. Guys, this is my second LS build that I did in my backyard. So guys, I am no expert. I'm learning as I'm going. I actually did a rookie mistake when building this LS3. When I had my first startup, I was having low oil pressure. I was literally freaking out. I went ahead and contacted a couple of friends that have more experience than me on LS engines. We went back and forth trying to figure out the problem. Could it be a cam bearing, pinch O-ring from the oil pump, O-rings from the valley cover, cam retainer plate gasket. I mean, everything was going through our heads. But when my friend mentioned valley cover O-rings, I remember I removed the valley cover and installed a new gasket, but didn't install new O-rings. Guys, don't ask me why, it's just a rookie mistake. I'm still trying to ask myself how would I remove the valley cover, put new gaskets, but won't replace the O-rings. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. 
but whatever. I went ahead and removed the valley cover and installed new O-rings and the problem was fixed. I was so damn happy. I was having 50 to 60 PSI oil pressure to idle, which is really great. Once everything was complete, I was in the market looking for some nice set of wheels. Guys, before I go into wheels, the way I built my car is simple. I'm more of a suspension and performance guy. I don't like to touch the originality of the car, meaning the factory interior. In my opinion, the material and durability these cars came with doesn't compare to any new car. I like leaving the interior factory. I might do small upgrades like adding a dual gauge pillar and upgrading speakers and radios, but other than that, I don't like touching the car. That's why when I'm buying a G-Body, I make sure the interior is A1 with no cracks on the dash or any rips or tears on the interior. I also love the factory paint job. If I have to repaint, I will repaint the car the same color. In my opinion, gray on gray SS is a nice combination and a rare combo. So back to the wheels, guys. I like the race look, and I also like big wheels on G-Bodies. I'm from Miami. I was basically raised that way. But when I mean big wheels, I like to go with the biggest wheels you can go with without cutting or trimming anything of the car. So in this case, I went with 24-inch Ford Giada wheels, 24 by 9.5s on the rear, and 24 by 85 on the front. There are three-piece wheels making them really light. I did not have to do any modification whatsoever other than rolling the fenders. The wheels fit perfect. I dropped the car in the front and in the back for an even and perfect stance. So once I had my wheels, I was ready for a tune. I got the car tuned from a really good friend of mine. You can look him up on Instagram, DSM Lights Tune. Really knowledgeable and experienced tuner. I went ahead and took the car to him and got a street tune. I drove the car for a couple of miles, but I am now ready for a twin turbo upgrade, guys. I love turbo. The G-Body I had before was a 1986 Buick Regal with an LS2 coming out of a 2006 Pontiac GTO and it was turbocharged. I will also be doing a video of that build as I still have pictures and videos throughout the whole process. I will keep you guys updated with videos of unboxing of car parts as they come in and the whole process of this future twin turbo build. Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it and please like and subscribe. Thanks.